So, in my last video on the Infinity Engine games, or rather former Infinity Engine games, I made a few apparently controversial comments about, well, everything. But in particular, I want to address one of them. While addressing all the comments I received in that last video will take me a month or two or six of recording and editing while playing the new updated Boulder's Gate 3, and I may in fact just wait for the full release, we'll, we'll have to see what my schedule's like, I wanted to address something that I do now think I was wrong about in my previous video. No, it's not that I suddenly like Boulder's Gate 3, or God forbid Divinity 2, but rather, I've noticed something about modern RPGs, including CRPGs, which I think explains something about why I didn't enjoy my first go through, through Boulder's Gate 3. Previously, I said I disagreed with the way Larian Games views roleplay, and I think that was a mistake. But it took me quite a bit of thinking to determine why I said that and for what reason, and as a result, what was really bothering me. I complained that you were thrown into the action much too swiftly. The epic elements one would expect in a late game campaign made an immediate appearance, and the player was encouraged, in some sense, to violence because of this. But on further reflection, this wasn't what was really bothering me. I definitely don't think there's only one way to roleplay. I don't think epic intros are bad per se. I definitely don't think that any roleplay that doesn't follow the kind of progression normally set out in 2.5e is wrong. Heck, I spend most of my time playing Powered by the Abyss games. So that left me thinking, what did I mean? Why do I feel that the view of roleplay that Larian Games takes is harmful to BG2? Well, I got my answer in a slightly different place. See, I've been working on a video about how Icewind Dale is a flawed classic, which will come out, well, sometime when I beat Icewind Dale. So it's, it's a really long game. I'd forgotten. It's a really long game. Uh, but during the intro, the game struck me and something hooked me in in a way that I'd not been hooked by a CRPG in, in a long time. And so this video is, is exploring that because I felt joy in progression and loot and leveling in a way I really had in a while. And Icewind Dale is not really considered, you know, the pinnacle of Infinity Engine gaming or CRPGs in general. So initially I couldn't figure out what it was. Why was I having so much fun? Then while looking back on the two initial maps of the game and reading some of the comments on the previous video, it hit me. The town of East Haven and Kaldahar. They're boring. Like, they're really, really boring. But they're boring in exactly the right way. My first completed quest was just to save a half-eaten fish from a band of goblins so that a father would not beat his son for malingering on the job. Helpful, yes. Epic, not so much. As you progress through the Kaldahar Pass, the game suddenly jumps in difficulty. There's no way back to helping little Jimmy with his fish. You're on your own, and there's a lot, I repeat, a lot of goblins. Oh my god, like, there's what? Uh, I checked the wiki, I think it's I think it's 42 goblins on the first map. You'll need to find your way to Kaldahar. You'll need to level up. You'll need to find some reasonably hidden quests to do that. And when you finally clear out that first map, if you do it, and you should do it, because you need all the loot you're going to need, that you can get to, 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 to beat this on core rules... There's a great sense of progression. You move from a simple errand boy to a set of scared travelers, ambushed by goblins, to someone who's in the process, at least, of becoming an adventurer. By the time you're level two, maybe your thief is up to level three, those goblins better freaking run. And then you're finally on your way to the Vale of Shadows, and that presents yet another big jump in epicness and complexity and difficulty and fear. God, that dungeon scared me so much as a little kid. So, what I took away from all this is that my issue is not with particular types of roleplay, and I regret saying that, nor even necessarily with particular types of storytelling. It's more that there's a particular device that I think is important to CRPGs that makes the progression in them, i.e. the way the gaming mechanics relate to the storytelling, particularly satisfying. And that's that I think CRPGs should have a hero's journey feeling with respects to character progression in the world. I mean, Luke Skywalker doesn't start off the film with his attack on the Death Star. He ends the film that way. 
He begins the film with the menial task of repairing and buying droids. This is one of the most important and overlooked aspects in modern storytelling, and it doesn't just happen in Baldur's Gate 3. You'll see it in almost every modern CRPG that I've played recently. It feels like epic events occur around you because you are the protagonist. It's just really become a modern feature of game design. Even if you play other CRPGs like Path of Exile, they tend to readily drill into your head that you are important. Even other CRPGs like Pillars of Exile tend to readily drill into the player's head that they are important to the world and their actions matter and that they will definitely be called to some higher destiny. And they tend to do this pretty darn quick. Now I suspect as a non-game developer, I still know why this is. Game devs have metrics on how their games are played. As a result, they know when people stop playing their games. And I suspect with Steam sales and discounts, a lot of people, including me, buy games and stop playing them very early on. So it makes sense to grab the player with the greatest epic events possible in the early stages of the game. Maybe not even for monetary reasons, but just because game developers want people to play their games. They don't want you to buy the game on discount from Steam and play two hours and just walk away. But the cost of this is, if you're like me, it can be quite huge. If you're the sort of person to be recommended a YouTube video by me, you probably have played RuneScape. You probably started out in RuneScape feeling meaningless. Another useless noob killing cows for hides and trying to eke out a living in a world that didn't care about you at all. But you got some skills, some gear, and you did a few basic quests. You did Demon Slayer and you thought, whoa, I can actually achieve things in this game. And then you did Vampire Slayer and you started to really feel cool. And then you did Dragon Slayer and you thought your 14 year old self was the boss. And then you did Monkey Madness 1 and 2 and regretted spending so much time on computer games. But the point is, RuneScape, even though it is an MMORPG, uses its quest to grow the world and your engagement with it, and as a result, a sense of your own importance in that world. But a lot of modern games just seem to assume the protagonist is entitled to be important. Whether it's gaming metrics or just cultural narcissism, I don't know. What I do know is I freaking love the intro to Icewind Dale, and a full video on that will be coming soon. <laughs>